hello guys welcome to today's class it's good to have you guys once again so this is Sir lawrence so in our last class you know we are going through a video series on on biology right we're going through a video series on biology so in our last class we we're able to talk about introductory embryology which is an embryological concept so in today's class we are going to be talking about cell division all right so that's what we're going to be talking about in today's class cell division and our focus will be on what is cell division what's the importance of cell division so we'll talk about the type and the mitosis and the meiosis all right so that's what I'm going to be focusing on in today's class. So the question now we ask ourselves is what is cell division? So we ask the question, is there a definition to cell division? Of course there is. It's not just cell division, it's not just division of the cell, but it's the process in which a parent cell, that's a matured cell, it could be a somatic cell, it could be a sex cell, which is the gamete, or garments, they divide, they go into this division, and it depends on the division. It could be mitosis or meiosis, which we are going to talk about in detail soon. So it's the process in which a parent cell divides, giving rise to two or more daughter cells. Alright? So it's an essential biological process. Why? So we're going to talk about that soon. Why? What's the importance? It's an essential biological process. How and why? We'll talk about that soon. So before we go into that, let's review uh, the typical structure. Let's refresh our memory on the typical structure of the cell. You have a cell here, and then you have it. You have this cell membrane, all right? You have the nucleus first. You have your nucleus here. And then you have this cytoplasm, all right? So your nucleus within your nucleus, you can see that it's um, surrounded by the nuclear membrane, which separates it from the cytoplasm, all right? And within it, you can see the contents. You have the, you can see here the chromosomes, all right? And you have the nucleoplasm also within. This structure within combination of the liquid there, that's the liquid content and the Organelles that has the DNA, the chromosomes, the nucleus, and the rest, they constitute the nucleoplasm, all right? And then you have this cytoplasm comprising of the cytosol, the liquid content, and the cell organelles, all right? And these are the cell organelles you can find here in this diagram. There are still more of them. You have here the mitochondria. You have here the endoplasmic reticulum. You have here the ribosome. And you have this very important cell organelle which take part in cell division called the central. So you have the central, right? So it's what we form what we call the spinifera. We're going to talk about that soon. All right. So this is just a review. There are other cell organelles not not um, shown here. We have the Golgi apparatus. You have the lysosomes, you have the vesicles, you have the cytoskeletons, and the rest. They are found within the cell, but they are not they are not shown or displayed in this diagram. All right, just to just go through and refresh your memory on the typical structure. So this is a matured cell, all right? It has gone to its maximum size, having its structures content necessary content so before it goes into cell division it's already a mature cell all right so now what's the importance of cell division one of it remember we said that it is a essential biological process how and why so now one of the reason is it takes part in embryonic development all right so this is a fertilized oocyte right and this oocyte undergoes multiple mitotic division all right as it undergoes this multiple mitotic division it differentiates and it develops into the 
the um, if you develop into the fetus, the embryo itself, from embryo it becomes a fetus, alright? So this whole process of human development occurs by several mitotic divisions, alright? Several mitotic divisions, and that's the focus of embryology, alright? So cell division takes part in embryonic development. Now another importance of cell division is for growth all right so when the cell goes into division and then it forms a new cell what happens growth comes in nutrients start coming into the cell that the cells start gaining nutrients externally internally and then it goes to its maximum size so when it gets to its maximum size it goes again into division all right so your growth now your growth now you can see the growth is the product of a um, division of mitotic division mostly is the product of mitotic division the lengthwise growth is a product of your of the mitotic division you can see the toddler turning into an adolescence turn into an adult and then becoming an elder and then a grandpa all right so that's what cell division does for you good so now let's talk about the last one. The cell division plays a role in replacement of damaged or dead cells. All right, there are cases where your cells become damaged, probably an injury, um, disease, infection. In that case, the cell needs to go into what we call necrosis. All right, it goes into necrosis. Why? Because it's suicidal, so this necrosis is suicidal death of cells. All right. The reason why it's going into that is to prevent that cell that has been damaged or the injured or infected from going into division again. All right. So to prevent that, it goes. The cell goes into necrosis. Because if that cell goes into division, what happens? It will produce abnormal cells, and in cases of cancer right so it goes into the necrosis and when our cells die when our cells die what happens there is a need to replace that dead cell so what happens now matured cells already existing goes into division and they produce and replace that dead cells all right so that's important then what we have apoplosis apoplosis is programmed cell death you read up this in your physiology process where a cell goes into division under the division of the cell itself is because of hemostasis that goes into the cell division in order to <coughs> but for example in cases of um development of the upper limbs like the digits you know they initially they are webbed and then they go into this apoptosis and then they become separated so if you study your embryology of the upper limb the digits you know what i'm saying all right so this apoptosis and this necrosis they cause death of cells and this is this is um cell programs to program cell death why this is caused by injury disease infection and the rest so the replacement of those damaged cells is what cell division does for you so now cell division is we can divide it into these categories we have the division of the nucleus called chirokinesis and then we have the division of the cytoplasm so chirokinesis must occur before cytokinesis so after chirokinesis we have your cytokinesis chirokinesis deals with the division of the nucleus of that cell all right and it's either resulting in two daughter cells at the end that are identical or four daughter cells that are non-identical so when the nucleus divides and it results in two daughter cells that are identical, that cell division is termed mitosis. But when it results to four daughter cells that are non-identical, that cell division is termed meiosis. All right. So we have mitosis and meiosis. All right. So that's it for this. So let's talk about the mitosis. That's the major focus of this video lesson. So what's mitosis? Mitosis is the division 
of the nucleus of a cell not just the cell but the nucleus of the cell remember we said cell division is made up of chirokinesis and cytokinesis all right so it's the division of the nucleus of a cell resulting in two identical daughter cells all right so this mitosis has majorly four phases you have the prophase you have the metaphase you have the anaphase and you have the telophase all right but there's a phase called the interface existing between the end of one mitotic division and the beginning of another it's called the word interface all right so it's a phase between complete successive mitotic division so at this phase now if the cell wants to go into division what happens you can see the DNA here, you can see the chromosomes here, all right. They are existing as chromatin, they are not visible here, they are long thread like and not visible within the nucleus, all right. Then you have your nuclear membrane here, you have your nucle nucleus here, then you have your central here. So, what happens now? DNA strands within this chromatin they duplicate, so DNA duplication will occur. So once DNA duplication occurs, what happens? All the content um, within we duplicate, and so once it duplicates, the strands start becoming distant. They start becoming distant, all right. So duplication is the first stage. DNA duplication. So now prophase. So this prophase. So when this duplication occurs, DNA duplication occurs. What happens? Each chromosome become bivalent all right it becomes bivalent the reason for the duplication is so that this um, chromatids that will be formed these two chromatids that will form we have similar dna content all right they will have similar dna content so that's the reason for that duplication so once that duplication has occurred the chromosome becomes First of all, rod like in appearance, all right. It becomes rod like in appearance. Why? Because the chromatids become more and more coiled. So when it becomes more and more coiled, it straightens up, it straightens up and becomes rod like, all right. So once it becomes that rod like, they become distinct, they separate. It, the chromosome becomes bivalent. Two chromatids joined together by the central neck, which you can see here. All right now that thing that will occur here at this prophase is the centrals that were once together they separate and start moving to the what opposite poles you can see they are separating they are moving to the opposite pole and as they move they form these microtubules these microtubules um, are what form the spindle fiber so they form these microtubules that um, later forms the spindle fibers all right so that's what occurs. So you can see now within this nucleus, the nuclear membrane breaks down at this phase, at late prophase. Nuclear membrane breaks down and the nucle nucleus later on disappears. So when that occurs, this is the result of that. You can see the nuclear content uh, floating, on, floating in the cytoplasm no longer within the nuclear membrane the nuclear membrane is gone the nucleus is gone so all this nuclear content are within the cytoplasm all right so the spindle fibers are formed the central the microtubules that are formed by the central they then form spindle fibers they run across from one end of the central from one central to the other all right so this these chromatids now, these bivalent chromatids, what happens? They come to line along the equatorial plane of the spindle fibers. You can see it line along the equatorial plane of the spindle fibers. So that's what occurs at metaphase. Let's go into the next phase. So we've talked about prophase and we've talked about metaphase. Let's talk about metaphase now. Let's talk, we've talked about metaphase. Let's talk about anaphase. So the next phase is anaphase. What happens here at anaphase is you find this, you see this um, central, central man, 
there will be a split in this sentiment.